beautiful people and welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer Diamond and I live a whole food, plant exclusive, sofas free, gluten free lifestyle for health and well being. And today I want to take you along to make some kabocha squash easy soup. So I have these two squashes here and I just was trying to figure out something that I could do with them um, besides slice them up and roast them or stuff them. And there are lots of different recipes for kabocha squash soup. And so anyways, I'm going to kind of try to make up my own and thought I'd bring you along. So one thing you could do after you wash them is... Um, peel the skin, cut it in half, and scoop out the seeds, and then you'd be ready to use the squash. But I learned from Chef AJ's, um, one of her books, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, that there's an easier way to deal with the squash. And I wanted to try her way of uh, prepping these and then make my own soup. So what I'm going to do is... Put it in the Instant Pot, just how it is, whole. I'm gonna put the rack in here. We're gonna add a cup of water. I've already washed these, and I'm just gonna put them in. Now, I have the six quart Instant Pot, so they kinda have to sit this way, as you could see. And I'm just gonna put the lid on. Start at 11, and seal it, plug it in. That's it telling me it's ready. And we're just gonna cook these first and then we'll be ready to handle them, peel them, clean them and all that good stuff. So she recommends you do it for 10 minutes and that's exactly what I'm gonna do with you right now. So let me set it for 10 minutes. And so while that's doing that, let's prepare some other ingredients that I just happened to have, I didn't really have a plan for, but um, I think, I think it'll work out, hopefully, to make into a soup. And now I've never done this before, so we're going to do this together. And so what I did was I took a piece of garlic that I had, and I cut it, you know, kind of broke it apart to see how many, how many cloves I had in here. And it's six cloves, so I figure let's use six cloves of garlic. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the edge, which you don't have to do. Um, another way you could do it is just kind of press it like that and I'm going to take the skins off of them so let's see if it'll work in this little handy dandy little garlic paper remover <gasps> not perfect but mm, yeah it's it started it so sometimes I get really excited and it works really well and other times, you know, you just got to kind of go with the flow. So I'm going to just keep feeding this in here and see if we can remove those and get the garlic ready to go. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, it just it takes the paper off and makes it a little easier. If you don't have fresh garlic, you can use garlic uh, powder. Um, some people buy minced or already like prepared garlic where the skin is already off. You can use whatever you have and... If you like garlic and you, you know, want to put a little bit more in, well, go ahead. And if you're not a big garlic fan, which I can't understand because I love garlic, but not everybody is, that's fine. You can uh, reduce it down to maybe four cloves. I just chose this amount because, like I said, this is just what I have. Yeah, look at that. All right, and here we go. For the most part, the paper removal has been started. I'm just going to finish it off and set it aside. Well, I had some carrots, and frankly, that's what I had left in the refrigerator, so I'm gonna take half of them, and I'm gonna put it in the soup. And this, maybe I'll cut up and use for dipping in hummus or anything else, um, but I think this is, you know, look at this is like a big piece of carrot. So let me just measure this, and so you can have an idea of how much we're putting in here. 
I've got my little handy dandy scale here, 7.92 ounces. So you get the idea of how much I'm using. And I'm just gonna go ahead and chop it up a little bit. So let's see, how should I do this? I think I'm gonna go long ways. I'm just gonna kind of make it into, you know, some some like more of a diced type of carrot, but you, you could do whatever you want. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I think what I'm gonna do is like saute it a little bit after the um, squash is done being cooked, just to give it, let some of the flavors come out. And so, um, but eventually this is gonna end up being a blended soup. And so, you know, you don't have to chop it up really finely or in a certain way. Um, just do the best you can. And there we go. Nice. Okay. Let me grab my handy dandy scraper scooper <laughs> that I really enjoy. I'm just gonna set that aside for now on our cutting board. And we don't need him anymore, so we'll put him aside. And then I think onion. I'm gonna grab some onion. I had a half an onion already um, in the refrigerator because I used half, and so let's weigh this. And let me see, let's pull the scale back out. Let's see how much this is so you have an idea of how much we're gonna use. And I am going to zero it out. And with the little top and the skin on it, it's measuring 0.392 pounds or 6.26 ounces. So could be a small onion, but you get the idea. Okay, so we're gonna put this aside. I'm gonna go ahead and take the paper off and chop up the onion. Now I think I'm gonna do the onion uh, a similar way, you know, in the pieces like uh, diced up like the carrot. And the reason why I wanna do that, just making sure that's sealed, um, is because they, I'm gonna saute them together a little bit and just get kind of the juices going on. So that'll be good. So how I do it is I try to go not all the way through the bottom um, because I want to kind of use this as a holder. And so I just cut down like that almost through, but not through on both sides. And this guy came out, but that's okay. And then I turn it and I do it the other way. And then I'm gonna turn this guy around and do it on this side. And that way, when I stand it up and I make a slice, it's diced, not sliced, get it? <laughs> and so I'm just gonna do that all the way through. It makes it a little bit easier. And in the middle, I see that there's some of these pieces that look a little bit dark to me. I'm just gonna pull those out. You don't have to do that, but that's what I'm gonna do. I feel like maybe that was gonna start to be a, you know, a little bit on the sprouty side, and I, I'm just gonna discard that. Okay, so we have this here, and I'm gonna just keep going all the way through. And there we go, we are ready to go. Whoa, I don't know if you saw that, but one just shot over here. <laughs> okay. So now, I'm gonna get rid of this guy. There we go, we've got our onion, we've got our garlic, we've got our carrots, and our squash is cooking in there. I also thought that I would add a little bit of seasonings. I'm just gonna put some ginger and table tasty. Um, you can use, anything that you want, whatever flavor profile you want. Now I know in Chef AJ's recipe, she uses a curry and um, some other seasonings. I'm just gonna go with these simple seasonings. I like the ginger um, combination with, um, you know, these, these um, 
the garlic and onions and stuff. But you know what? I'm actually thinking that I might also bring in some turmeric. So let me grab that. I normally keep fresh turmeric on hand. I'm out right now, so I can use that. I'm gonna use all of these, but you can, like I said, use any flavors that you want. So we're ready to go with this. Um, you know what I might actually do, just because we have a little bit of time together? You don't have to do this, but I think I'm just gonna give these a little chop too. So everything will be chopped nicely. Awesome, okay. So now I'm gonna take a little break and come back once this is uh, done. It looks like it uh, is already on eight minutes, so we've only got a couple more minutes left. Okay, I'm gonna unplug it. Let's see, our Instant Pot. I hope that we did a good job here, canceling, pulling this, and let's check it out. I always try to lift it and put the lid in it so that any of the condensation will fall into our Instant Pot. And then on mine, I have this little uh, handy dandy lid holder. So, huh, look at that. That's pretty darn good. You know what else I'm gonna get? All right, I think we're ready to go. So it is hot. And it doesn't feel super soft, but it doesn't feel hard as a rock. So hopefully this will be uh, perfect for us to get into. And I'm just gonna lift these out. Look at that. So hopefully they're ready to go. Wow. Ah, yikers. <laughs> okay, so let's put this aside. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm trying to think if I should peel it first or cut it in half. I think I'm going to do one of each. So let's cut this in half. Oh yeah. I'm going to kind of go around this little top. Oh yeah, this is nice and soft. Wow, hot, hot, hot. Look at this. Let's just take a peek in here. Wow, that's definitely a lot easier than uh, doing it the way that I've done it in the past. So now I'm gonna get a spoon. Let's scrape out the seeds. I personally like to keep the seeds, clean them out, and then just like pumpkin seeds, I will um, toast them. I might put some, I don't know, garlic powder, or if you want it spicy, you can even put cayenne powder, or any kind of spices that you want. Um, I like onion and garlic, and a little bit on the mild side, you could put black pepper, really anything, and then I toast them up and eat them. I put them on my salad, or just whatever. So for now, I'm gonna set these aside and clean them later. Let's bring this bowl back here. And, oh my goodness. <laughs> This is hot. So you wanna make sure when you're doing it that you give it a chance to cool off a little bit because you don't wanna burn yourself. But um, okay, so that's that guy. Now, let's see about just cutting this up, cutting the, uh, not cutting it up, but cutting the, um, the skin off for now. I'm just gonna put that aside. And, and then I think I might even just dice it up a little and I'm gonna go ahead and start putting those in this bowl right here that we have so that'll be ready for us. So let's see. It's always better if you can put it on the flat side and I'm just gonna move this guy, yow, right over there. Um, put it on the flat side so that it doesn't roll because that's something you don't want. It is a runaway squash. And so now I'm just gonna kinda peel this off. Look at that and just cut the skin off. Uh, it's, hard, it's hard to do it totally flat and show you, but you know, however you can so that it's not a runaway. And just gently cut off all of the skin. I'm not gonna use the skin, any of this green. There we go, and it's just, wow, it's really just cutting right off. 
you know, I can hear something and know like how to do something, but once I actually do it and it works out, I get really excited. So if you have a different way that you uh, peel your squash or, you know, cook it and prepare it for something like this, please leave a comment in the, in the bottom there and let's chat about it and um, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified when I go live or post new videos. I would love to uh, have you give this a thumbs up and support my channel. And so I'm also just continuing to peel the skin off, cut it right off. It's so soft. It's amazing going to taste so delicious. This is like, well, I like all kinds of squashes, but this is a really tasting, tasty and beautiful squash to eat and enjoy. Okay. And so I think except for the part you're looking at, yep, we've got this one all ready to go. And just going to cut this last little piece off. Being careful because I put it on the round side, but that's the only way I could reach it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna flip it back over, slice it up just like that, and it is still hot. So like I said, you wanna make sure that you can handle it. And then I'm gonna turn my little um, apple cutting board this way so you can see and I can have it all chopped up nicely. And there you go, ready to roll. So, ah! This is so hot. I'm just going to put that there for a minute. Put the back side and look at that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, we're going to do the same thing that we just did to the other half. Here we go. Okay, and now we have the other one that I was thinking, let's try to peel the outside first. But the other one worked out so well. I almost wonder if this is a bad idea, but we said we would do it. So let's just go for it. I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to start at the bottom first. Oh, so far so good. Besides the fact that it's hot. <laughs> and um, maybe I would do this side next. Okay. Look at that. Ah! <laughs> it's like a little hat. Um, okay, so. I'm gonna just do that and then let's see if I can just kind of do that. Hey, that's not too bad either. So you can see there's all different ways to do it. Just do what works best for you. Now, do any of you save this skin and use it in the veggie broth? I mean, technically it is a veggie. I've never done that before. I wonder how that would be. Hmm. As my girlfriend says, I'm gonna have to noodle on that. There we go. Whoops, that's a good piece, we'll keep that. Okay, so we know that either way works. And so now we're just gonna have to cut it open. Let's get the uh, seeds out of this side and we're gonna be ready to get cooking. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Lots of goodies to eat later. Yeah, just so, so hot. And how I clean it is I'll, I'll just um, put it in a colander and try to get the seeds, you know, out and, and discard whatever is left from the insides, the juice. Oh my goodness, so yes, future self, let it cool a little bit longer. <laughs> Maybe start cutting the veggies once it's done so that it has a chance to cool. But here you go, look at that. That looks pretty great. I'm gonna flip these guys over again and see if I can just chop them. So now I can use this guy again and go ahead and pour the rest of this in the bowl and set it aside. Give me just a minute to rinse my hands and we'll get busy. Now I am gonna use some veggie broth. My veggie broth that I'm using is my homemade veggie broth. I've been having it thaw right over here. And 
it didn't, um, I felt like there was a little hole in the bag. So it didn't totally thaw. So um, that would also help. But look at, I can kind of crumble it in there. And I think once we get it in the hot pan, it's going to do its job pretty quickly. But I'm going to set this aside because we will be dealing with that momentarily. Let's go ahead and check and see if this is hot yet. Nope, it's not. So let's give it a few more minutes. And um, in the meantime, I'm just going to move some of this out of here so we're not so crowded. I hear it sizzling and it's only been like a minute. So I'm pretty sure that we're good now. And so I'm gonna go ahead and scoop this in there. We are looking for our scraper scooper guy. I'm gonna start with the onion and let's move the the garlic aside. Garlic I like to do last when I'm doing this because garlic is one uh, that will burn easily. And I want the onions and the carrots to have some time to just, you hear that? Sizzle, it's ready nice and hot. Just have a time to you know become translucent or bring out any um, flavors that, that are brought out when you do a little bit of sauteing. It's amazing. And I'm just gonna do the onion for a minute or so before the carrots. Then I'm gonna dump it all in. You could dump it all in together, frankly. But here I am doing it a little bit separate. There we go. For the most part, I got, all, got it separated. And we're gonna put this in in a minute anyway. So let's give it a nice stir. Look at that, woo! I love it. The smell of cooking onions. Like, I don't know about you, but I really think it smells great. Let's get these ready to go because they're up next. And if you notice that it's browning, it looks like, oh my gosh, it's burning. Just add a little tablespoon of water. Give it a quick stir. It's going to be just fine. And the only kind of spoon or spatula I wouldn't recommend is a metal one because you're in, you know, in the stainless steel pot and you don't want to scratch the bottom of it. But I like using this or something longer versus the ones that come with it that are a lot shorter because of the steam and the, the cooking process. Yeah, you could already see it's starting to get a little translucent. I'm gonna go ahead and add the carrots at this point. In you go, carrots. Nice. Whoops, one jumped out. And then what we have left is the garlic. Fresh garlic. <laughs> well, let me just stir that up a bit. Wow. And you don't have to stir it constantly, but I like to, you know, keep an eye on it and let it, let it kind of sit for a little and then stir for a little. Oh yeah, look at that. That's really nice, coming along really well. Now, what if you didn't want to do this? Is it really gonna change much? Probably not. So, if you didn't want to spend the extra few minutes sauteing, you're in a hurry or for whatever reason you just can't be bothered, then you can go ahead and put it in and skip this step. But I always find that um, it brings out more flavor. And the idea is to have as much of a flavorful soup as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the fresh garlic that we chopped up. That's the last thing here. And just give it a nice quick stir. And then I'm gonna open these up while we're letting that just kind of do its thing. And remember, we're using ginger, turmeric, and some table tasty. Part of me is like, should I use table tasty? Should I use, you know, galaxy dust? Some people use the Kirkland um, blend the no salt seasoning. You could use that. You could use Mrs. Dash. I mean, just 
whatever you're, you're comfortable with, I think is great. All right, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pour in our butter, our uh, kabacha squash. Whoa, 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 I got a runner here. Get in there, buddy. There we go, we've got it all in. How beautiful does that look? I'm gonna go ahead and get my measuring spoon and I'm gonna put uh, half a teaspoon of the ginger. I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of Benson's Table Tasty and maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of the turmeric. And you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a little black pepper. I like to add black pepper when I'm using turmeric. Uh, I've heard from so many uh, doctors and different people that understand the, um, you know, bringing out um, the turmeric benefits by just adding a little black pepper. Plus, black pepper is tasty. So let me turn off the saute because we're not gonna be sauteing anything anymore and let's move this out of the way. And now I'm gonna get my not really thawed out <laughs> veggie broth that I made. Oh my gosh, one great thing about veggie broth when you make it homemade is that depending on what vegetables you use to cook it and spices, that it's never exactly the same. So your flavors could change. If you don't have this, you can always use a no salt, no oil um, store-bought vegetable broth. And I tend to use the Bonafide uh, when I'm using it store-bought if I ran out of this or just didn't have time to let it thaw. And that's a really good one, but just make sure to check the labels. So I am gonna pour this in here. Okay, that frozen piece is going to add to our time uh, when it brings it up and starts to get hot and like suctions and closes off. It's gonna take a little bit longer because of this big guy here, but that's, that's fine. It'll all work out in the end. And I think for now, like, that's it. So I'm going to close this up. Ooh, there we go. 11 o'clock closed. I'm going to put this to seal and I am going to, it's on 10 minutes. I'm going to do maybe 12 minutes. Uh, you could probably even do 15 minutes, but the reason I decided to go an extra two minutes is just because um, it's frozen and I don't know, I just decided. <laughs> There's the beeping sound. So we'll be back and, um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so it uh, buzzed our Instant Pot and it's all ready now. Um, it's doing a natural release currently. I just wanna tell you that I was saying before that I wanted to put it on 12 minutes because I thought it was gonna help, you know, go a little longer because we had like those ice pieces in there. And I realized it's gonna have to melt and be ready before the timer starts. So 10 minutes, 12 minutes, I think anywhere in between there is gonna be fine. And um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna release the rest of it and um, take a peek in there. But I also wanna tell you that I cut up, I cleaned up everything, and then I cut up some fresh parsley that I were gonna put on top, and I have some uh, plant milk here. This is, um, let's see, a cup and a half, and you can add more if you need. We're gonna add that in a few minutes. So let's uh, take a peek here. Well, whoa! <laughs> well. <laughs> well, okay, first we have to... <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. First we have to vent it. Now, if you want to wait till it naturally releases, that's fine too. 
but I want to get going and show you. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to <laughs> vent this. And isn't that funny? As I moved this thing, it kind of uh, spoke to me. So it automatically went to keeping warm. And so I'm going to leave it like that until I check it. Ooh, wow, look at that. That looks really good. And it smells delicious too. It's kind of a mild, mild scent. Ooh, very comforting scent. Is there such a thing? I think there is. Okay, so. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the plant milk into it, minus just, um, no, I'm gonna pour the whole thing into it. Let's just do it, here we go. I happen to be using soy milk because that's what I have. Almond milk or any other type of plant milk will work for you. Um, so just do whatever makes you happy. I'm gonna unplug it and turn this off because I think it's safer. Cancel, I'm unplugging. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my immersion blender and put this together. Click. If you haven't seen my immersion blender comparison video, I'll link it in the top. If you don't have one of these and you're interested in it, I did a comparison and um, anyways, check it out if you haven't. Okay, so before we get cracking, I just, I'm gonna take the lid off and I'm gonna move it a little bit closer to me so I can reach it better. And you wanna be very careful because this is hot. If you don't have one of these, you can use it in a high speed uh, power blender like the Vitamix or whatever you have. You know, just work with what you have. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Now, if you want a thicker soup, you might want to add, if you're, if you're using a coconut milk, I don't use coconut milk because it's high fat. Um, I prefer not to, but if you're looking for a thicker type of soup, then you want, might want to add that instead. And I wouldn't add a half a uh, cup and a half. I would maybe add half a cup. <laughs> Now, another thing is, if you want it a little chunky, you can leave it a little chunky. I want it smooth, personally, so I'm gonna just go a little bit longer. Wow, that seems really good. Okay, oh my gosh. That really smells delicious. Now I'm excited. I mean, I was excited before, but I just got a whiff of some deliciousness. So let me unplug this guy, and I'm just gonna take it apart. Put this piece, you can check out the blade, it's all nice and clean. I'm gonna put it in the sink and I'm gonna put this guy over here. And let's uh, get a bowl out and taste it. Oh, I gotta move the cord. Okay, so we have our bowl here. I'm using a ladle and wow, look at that. That looks so good, oh my goodness. Creamy, it's creamier than I, than I thought it was gonna be. Beautiful soup, wow. Okay, let's put it down. Now, I'm just gonna set this aside as well. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of the fresh parsley on there. And here's my spoon. Are you ready to taste this? Oh my gosh. I do not want to burn my mouth, but I really am excited to hurry up and taste this. Wow, that's really good. Mmm. Yeah, I love it. Uh, we did it. So I hope you enjoyed making this soup with me for the first time. Um, and I hope it encourages you to try different kinds of squashes if you haven't. And um, you know, it doesn't have to be fall to make soup. It's delicious, it's nutritious, and um, you know, 
leave a comment. Let me know. Did you make it? Did you like it? I did. I can serve this also with a side of greens. I can do um, some steamed broccoli. Ooh, there's a good idea. Or a side salad. Um, but let's try it one more time. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Thank you so much. Don't forget to eat your greens. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.